Hello everybody, this is Cap here, and I would like to welcome you to our second video on arrays. So in this video, we are going to be covering uh, arrays of objects and arrays of pointers. So let's say we have a class, and we're just going to name it Stuff. So inside this class, we have two public data members which are integers and we'll call them cool oops cool and cool2 and let's actually set them equal to 0 like that so let's make three objects based off this class say stuff thing1 stuff thing two and stuff thing three now we can create an array with these objects the same way we, we would create any other array using any other data type we'd specify the data type which in this case is stuff the name of our array which we'll say you know thing array and then the number of you know, elements in the array should be three. So now we can just say equals thing one, thing two, and thing three. Oh, there we go. Let's create a for loop here. loop through it and then we're going to assign some values as it loops through so this here is going to specify which object we're referring to by the index so of course first time through it's going to be zero so thing array I would be equal to thing one so we can just access the data members by saying dot and then the the data member which is cool and then again we can do the same thing except this time we want to access cool too all right so after that let's just go ahead and print out what we've changed here oh ha forgot the eye my bad okay And now we're all good to go. So let's save it and run it. As you can see, it did what we expected it to. But in reality, it actually probably didn't do what we would want it to do. And we can see that if we come down here, and I'll just paste this to save a lot of time. And we print out our actual objects up here. you can see it didn't actually change our objects what it did was it made a copy of our objects to store in the array which probably isn't really what we would want to normally do what we would probably want to do is store a pointer to our actual objects in the array so therefore we would need an array of pointers So what we would do is come back here, put the star symbol there to indicate that we do want this to be an array of pointers. And then since we want the address, thing one, address of thing two, and the address of thing three. 
We have changed these to arrows because we're now accessing them through a pointer. Okay. So now if we save and run this, as we can see, it did what we would probably want it to do. It changed the actual objects themselves. So this works, you know, all good and well if you already have your objects created. So what if you don't? Well, you can just go ahead and allocate them on the heap and then store a pointer to them in the array. Which is, you know, most of the time probably what you would do. So you'd have new stuff, new stuff, and new stuff. So it's going to allocate these on the heap and then their addresses are going to be returned and stored in the pointers in the array. So, <clears throat> again, if we save this, run it, see we didn't get any compile errors, we're all good. But, there is something that you should probably remember to do. And that is, since we are now allocating these on the heap, we have to delete them. So, create another for loop here. Zero. Ah, it's less than three. I plus plus. I want to say delete thing array I. And then also. Thing array I want to sign to null. So let's save that and let's actually step through this in the memory. Here. Okay. So let's go to the address of our thing array. That should be it, I do believe. And let's go a few steps forward. And there. As you can see now we have our objects have been allocated and our addresses are now stored in our array. So let's go to, let's say, the second object in our array. or the second object that our ray pointer is pointing to is four, nine, 700 okay so as you can see space has been allocated for our object and if we go a few steps forward here we can watch it change the values here. Okay. You can see it changed it to 1. Changed it to 1. So good. So once it gets to our second for loop here, the second pass through, it should deallocate this and set our second one here to all zeros. There's the first one, and now there we go on the second one. So if we hadn't done that, let's X out of here. Let's actually take out this. And step into it. Go, there we go. 
There's where our array is. Let's do it a few times here. Okay, there's our addresses. Let's go to the second one, second object, and just watch it. Okay, so there's our second object in memory. Let's just step through it again. See a change, of course. Okay. We set the first one to null. Set the second one to null. So now what's happened is we've set our pointer to null, but our object is still out there in memory. And this is what's known as a memory leak, because now we have no way to access this memory out here, so it's just going to sit there until the end of our program. Now, it doesn't really matter here, because the end of our programs are, is right after, you know, where we set all these to null and all that. But if this were a larger program, this would be an issue, especially if you did it a lot, because your program would just be out there eating up memory for no reason. So that's something you really need to watch out for. Whenever you allocate something with the new, you have to delete it. So there are a few other ways you can make a array of pointers to an object. back there and they're mostly the same as we did with you know an int or anything else you could you know you don't have to have the equal you don't have to specify it if you do it like this but I always like to as I said and of course I usually like to put a constant to specify the amount here like uh const int max num equals 3 which by the way it has to be a constant otherwise it will not work if I were to take the const away it would flag it because it has to know at compile time that what it will be so therefore this can't vary it must be the same at compile time as it is when it gets to the array because you know the program has to know beforehand with arrays and I mean I think that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to cover in this video so if you guys like this video please let me know by hitting the like button if you've seen a few of my videos and really like them go ahead and subscribe so you can see when I post new ones and I would like to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.